Dilophosaurus is a genus of theropod dinosaurs that lived in what is now North America during the early Jurassic, about 186 million years ago. In 1940, three skeletons were discovered in northern Arizona, with the two best preserved specimens being collected in 1942. The most complete of these became the holotype for a new species in the genus Megalosaurus which Samuel Wells named Megalosaurus weatherilli in 1954. In 1964, Wells found a larger skeleton of the same species. Noticing the presence of crests on its skull, he reclassified the species into a new genus, naming it Dilophosaurus weatherilli in 1970. The genus name means two-crested lizard, and the species name honors John Weatherill, a Navajo counselor, Fossil footprints, including resting traces, have also been attributed to this dinosaur. Another species, Dilophosaurus sinensis, was named from China in 1993, but was later reclassified into the genus Cynosaurus. At about 7 meters or 23 feet in length, and with a weight of about 400 kilograms or 880 pounds, Dilophosaurus was one of the earliest large predatory dinosaurs and the largest known land animal in North America at the time. It was slender and lightly built, and the skull was proportionally large, but delicate. The snout of this dinosaur was narrow, with a distinct gap or kink just below the nostril in the upper jaw. This Jurassic beast had a pair of long, arched crests on its skull, though their exact shape is unknown. They were likely enhanced by keratin. The mandible was slender and delicate at the front, becoming deeper towards the back. The teeth were long, curved, thin, and compressed from the sides, with those in the lower jaw being much smaller than those in the upper. Most of the teeth had serrations along their front and back edges. Dilophosaurus had a long neck supported by hollow and very lightweight vertebrae. Its arms were strong, featuring a long and slender upper arm bone. The hands of this Jurassic beast had four fingers. The first was short but robust, with a large claw. The next two fingers were longer and more slender, with smaller claws, and the fourth finger was vestigial. The thigh bone was thick and sturdy. The feet were strong, and the toes had large claws. Dilophosaurus has been considered a member of the family Dilophosauridae along with the Dracovenator, a group placed between the Coelophysidae and later theropods. But some researchers have not found support for this grouping. Dilophosaurus would have been active and bipedal, and may have hunted large animals. It could also have fed on smaller animals and fish. Due to the limited range of movement and shortness of the forelimbs, the mouth may instead have made first contact with the prey. The crests were too weak for battle, but may have been used in visual display, such as species recognition and sexual selection. Dilophosaurus may have grown rapidly, attaining a growth rate of 30 to 35 kilograms or 66 to 77 pounds per year early in life. Dilophosaurus is known from the Cayenta Formation and lived alongside dinosaurs such as Scutellosaurus and Sarasaurus. It was designated as the state dinosaur of Connecticut based on tracks found there. Dilophosaurus was featured in the novel Jurassic Park and its movie adaption, where it was given the fictional abilities to spit venom and expand the neck frill and was depicted as smaller than the real animal. Dilophosaurus was one of the earliest large predator dinosaurs, a medium-sized theropod, though small compared to some of the later theropods. It was also the largest known land animal of North America during the early Jurassic. Slender and lightly built, its size was comparable to that of a brown bear. The largest known specimen weighed about 400 kilograms or 880 pounds, measured about 7 meters or 23 feet in length, and its skull was 590 millimeters or 23 inches long. The smaller holotype specimen weighed about 283 kilograms or 624 pounds, was 6.03 meters or 19 feet 9 inches long, and its skull was 523 millimeters long. 
a resting trace of a theropod comparable to Dilophosaurus and Lilianstirnus has been interpreted by some researchers as showing feather-like impressions around the belly and feet, similar to down. However, other researchers suggest that these impressions may be sedimentological artifacts caused by the dinosaur's movements, though this does not eliminate the possibility that the track maker may have had feathers. The skull of Dilophosaurus was both large and delicate, with a narrow snout that tapered towards the rounded top. The premaxilla, the front bone of the upper jaw, was long, low, and convex at the front, with the nostrils set further back than in most other theropods. The premaxillae were tightly connected, forming a strong joint with the maxilla, though only at the middle of the palate. A gap called the subnarial gap, or kink, existed between the premaxilla and maxilla, resulting in a diastema, or gap in the tooth row. A distinctive feature of Dilophosaurus was the pair of high, thin crests on its skull, known as nasolacrimal crests. These crests began as low ridges on the premaxillae and were mainly formed by the nasal and lacrimal bones. The lacrimal bone also formed part of the upper front border of the orbit and supported the bottom of the crest. The crests may have been covered in keratin, potentially enlarging them more than the bone alone indicates. CT scans suggest that air sacs were present in the bones surrounding the brain and possibly within the crests, making them lighter. Dilophosaurus had four teeth in each premaxilla, 12 in each maxilla and 17 in each dentary. The teeth were long, thin, and recurved, with small bases and serrations on the front and back edges. These teeth were slightly concave on their outer and inner sides and covered in a thin layer of enamel. The alveoli or tooth sockets were larger than the bases of the teeth, suggesting that the teeth were loosely held in the jaws. Despite the number of alveoli indicating that the teeth were crowded, they were actually spaced apart due to the size of the alveoli, and the jaws contained replacement teeth at various stages of eruption. The interdental plates between the teeth were very low. Overall, Dilophosaurus combined a delicate yet large skull with unique cranial crests and specialized teeth, reflecting its adaptability and distinctiveness among theropods. Speaking of the crests of Dilophosaurus, their use has been another source of disagreement among paleontologists for generations. While several suggestions have been tossed around through the years, such as thermoregulations and species recognition, most scientists tend to agree that the crests of Dilophosaurus were display features used by this dinosaur to attract a mate. A rough rule of thumb in paleontology, if a fossil animal has some big, weird anatomical feature with no other obvious use, it's often safe to say it's a display feature until further notice. It seems that what with the spikes, frills, horns, feathers, and crests present throughout so many dinosaur lineages, these animals weren't afraid of showing off. The Mesozoic world must have been teeming with the raucous, primordial displays of these animals. Early studies suggested that Dilophosaurus had a relatively weak bite due to the subnarial gap in its upper jaw. Paleontologist Samuel Wells believed it used its front premaxillary teeth for plucking and tearing rather than biting, and that its maxillary teeth further back were used for piercing and slicing. He theorized that Dilophosaurus was likely a scavenger rather than an active predator, and that it would have used its hands and feet rather than its jaws to kill large prey. Wells also found no evidence of cranial kinesis, meaning the skull bones were not capable of independent movement, which would have limited its bite strength. Contrasting Wells' view, Robert Backer in 1986 argued that Dilophosaurus was adapted for killing large prey, given its massive neck, skull, and large upper teeth. Gregory Scott Paul in 1988 dismissed the idea that Dilophosaurus was primarily a scavenger, stating that its snout was stronger than previously thought and its maxillary teeth more lethal than its claws. Paul suggested that Dilophosaurus was capable of hunting large animals, such as prosauropods, 
and was better suited for snapping small prey than other theropods of a similar size. A 2005 study by Francois Therrien and colleagues used beam theory found that Dilophosaurus's bite force decreased towards the back of the mandible. This suggested that the front of the jaw, with its rosette of teeth and strong symphysal region, was used to capture and manipulate smaller prey. The mandible's design was similar to that of felids and crocodilians, animals that use the front of their jaws for powerful bites to subdue prey. The study suggested that Dilophosaurus likely hunted smaller prey, which it would wound with slashing bites before capturing it with the front of its jaws. In 2007, paleontologists Milner and James Kirkland suggested that Dilophosaurus may have eaten fish, pointing to its rosette of interlocking teeth and retracted nasal openings, similar to those of Spinosaurids and Gharials, both of which are fish-eating animals. These features, along with the long arms and well-developed claws, would have helped Dilophosaurus catch fish in the lakes that existed in its environment following the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event. In 2018, Possible tooth marks on a Sarasaurus specimen were attributed to Dilophosaurus, suggesting it may have scavenged on the remains of this sauropodomorph. Marsh and Rowe in 2020 proposed that the features distinguishing Dilophosaurus from earlier theropods were linked to increased body size and a capacity for preying on large animals. They agreed that while Dilophosaurus could have fed on fish and smaller prey, it was also capable of handling larger bodied prey using its forelimbs to manipulate them during predation and scavenging. By 2021, Matthew Brown and Timothy Rowe argued that Dilophosaurus has strong enough jaws to puncture bone, and its respiratory system, with fleshy air sacs extending into its vertebrae, allowed for efficient, unidirectional breathing similar to birds and crocodiles. This would have enabled a higher metabolic rate suggesting Dilophosaurus was a fast, agile hunter. Brown and Rowe concluded that Dilophosaurus was likely an apex predator in its ecosystem rather than a scavenger. Dilophosaurus was envisioned by Wells as an active, clearly bipedal animal, similar to an enlarged ostrich. He described its forelimbs as strong and flexible, not used for locomotion, but as powerful weapons capable of grasping, slashing, and reaching two-thirds up its neck. Wells also suggested that when resting, Dilophosaurus might sit on its ischium, tail, and feet. In 1990, paleontologists Stephen and Sylvia Sekas proposed that Dilophosaurus's weak pelvis might have been an adaption for an aquatic lifestyle, suggesting it could have been an efficient swimmer. However, they also noted that its strong hind limbs would have made it agile on land, indicating it wasn't restricted to water. In 2005, Phil Center and James Robbins analyzed the range of motion in Dilophosaurus's forelimbs, finding that it could draw its humerus backward but not much forward, with a limited elbow and wrist movement. They also noted that the fingers were likely passively hyperextendable, which would help resist dislocation during prey capture. In 2018, Center and Corwin Sullivan further explored the forelimb motion, confirming similar findings and adding that the wrists couldn't pronate, meaning the palms faced each other. This inability to pronate was a shared ancestral trait among theropods. Dilophosaurus was also pretty fast, being capable of running at more than 43 kilometers per hour or 27 miles per hour. Its footprints, discovered by Wells in 1971, were found in a chicken yard hodgepodge pattern, with few forming a clear trackway. These prints, made in mud, showed varying toe positions and flexibility, with some indicating slipping or mud clinging to the feet. The footprints had distinct features, such as an offset second toe with a thick base and long straight claws. Wells initially interpreted the proximity of three individuals and overlapping trackways as evidence that Dilophosaurus traveled in groups, but later discussions noted that this could have been due to natural processes like flash floods rather than deliberate group behavior. 
Wells acknowledged that the function of Dilophosaurus crests was speculative, suggesting that they might have been used for thermoregulation, species recognition, or ornamentation, despite lacking grooves for vascularization. In 1986, Backer proposed that the crests were likely sexual adornments, being too thin for combat and primarily for visual effect. The Circus also suggested in 1990 that the crests were too delicate for battle and were likely used for visual display to attract mates, possibly aiding in thermoregulation as well. Walter Coombs in the same year posited that the crests could have been enhanced by bright colors for display purposes. In 2011, it was proposed that the crests of Dilophosaurus and other bizarre structures in dinosaurs were primarily used for species recognition, dismissing alternative theories as unsupported by evidence. However, this idea was countered by the suggestion that while species recognition might be a secondary function, sexual selection was likely the primary role given the high developmental costs and variability of such structures within species. In 2013, the species recognition hypothesis was further criticized, with arguments pointing out that no living animals use such structures primarily for this purpose. Instead, mutual sexual selection, where both sexes are ornamented, was suggested as a more plausible explanation. By 2020, the idea that the crests of Dilophosaurus likely played a role in species identification or sexual selection, similar to behaviors observed in some modern birds, was supported though it remains uncertain if the air sacs in the crests contributed to these functions. In the 1990 novel Jurassic Park, Dilophosaurus was given the ability to spit venom. But there's no fossil evidence of this. Author Michael Crichton wanted to show that a dinosaur recreated from ancient DNA could be unpredictably dangerous. So, he created the venom idea to illustrate this. Some living animals, such as spitting cobras and spitting spiders, do have this ability. In the 1993 movie adaption, director Steven Spielberg and his design team also gave Dilophosaurus an expanding neck frill. This was another more visual way to show that an extinct animal could have surprising traits. While the venom and neck frill were artistic creations for Jurassic Park, it's always possible that any dinosaur had unusual attributes that their fossils don't show. Crylophosaurus, the cold-crested lizard, is notable for being the first meat-eating dinosaur ever to be discovered on the continent of Antarctica. As you can imagine, the continent of Antarctica isn't exactly a hotbed of fossil discovery, not because it was bereft of dinosaurs during the Mesozoic era, but because climate conditions make long-scale expeditions nearly impossible. When its partial skeleton was unearthed in 1990, Cryolophosaurus became only the second dinosaur ever to be discovered on the vast southern continent, after the plant-eating Antarctopalta, which lived over a hundred million years later. The most distinctive feature of Cryolophosaurus was the single crest atop its head, which didn't run front to back as on Dilophosaurus and other crested dinosaurs, but side to side, like the 1950s Pompadour. That's why the dinosaur is affectionately known to paleontologists as Elvisaurus, after singer Elvis Presley. The purpose of this crest remains a mystery, but as with the human Elvis, it was probably a sexually selected characteristic meant to attract the female of the species. You can watch more interesting facts about Cryolophosaurus in our coming documentary video about the dinosaurs and creatures that lived in Antarctica. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next videos.